Good evening. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of the Morristown area, I am pleased to welcome you to our virtual forum for the Morris County Freeholder Race. My name is Megan Davis, and I am the chair of the League of Women Voters of Warren and West Morris Counties. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political nonprofit that works to empower voters and defend democracy. Founded 100 years ago, we make democracy work by protecting voting rights and encouraging robust participation. We are committed to providing fact-based information about issues and the positions candidates take on those issues. Our goal is to help voters make their own decisions and participate in the electoral process. We envision a democracy where everyone has the knowledge, the confidence, and the opportunity to participate. The League of Women Voters never supports or opposes candidates for office or political parties. Any use of the League name or footage from this debate in campaign materials, literature, or advertising of any kind, including internet, social media, cable, or television, has not been authorized by the League of Women Voters. Co-sponsoring this event, we welcome the Morris County NAACP. Their mission is to secure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights in order to eliminate race-based discrimination and ensure the health and well-being of all persons. We look forward to continuing our work together. If you would like to participate in any of our efforts, the League actively seeks diversity in our membership. You must be 16 years old and a U.S. citizen to be a voting member. Associate membership is open to everyone. We also encourage everyone to go to vote411.org, which provides a one-stop site for information on all aspects of voting in New Jersey, as well as information about all candidates up and down the ballot. All of our forums are being live streamed on the Morris Town Area League of Women Voters YouTube channel. If you have questions about voting, mail-in ballots, or in-person voting, visit lwvmorrisarea.org for educational webinars. All ballots have been mailed, and if you haven't received yours yet, contact your county clerk's office. You may return your ballot through the mail, in a secure Dropbox location, directly to your Board of Elections or to a polling site on election day. If you go to a polling site to vote in person on election day, you will be asked to fill out a provisional paper ballot. Future confirmed forums include the Chatham Township Committee Forum this Wednesday, October 15th at 7 p.m. There will also be a state Senate an assembly forum for District 25 on October 23rd. At this time, I would like to introduce our moderator, Marlene Sincaglia. Per league practice, she is not from this voting district. Marlene is a league trained moderator and a member of the Berkeley Heights, New Providence and Summit League. She will introduce the candidates and outline the, outline the format for this evening. Thank you, Megan. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to introduce the two candidates that are running for Morris County Freeholder. First, we have Carrie Amaro. Hi, how are you? And secondly, we have Tafon Selen. Selen. This forum is going to be divided into three parts. The first part deals with um, opening statements. Each candidate will have two minutes to make an opening statement. At the end of 90 seconds, they will see a yellow card that will tell them they have 30 seconds left. And then at the end of two minutes, they will see a red card that says stop. The candidates will complete their thought and then we will move on to the second portion of the program. So opening statements, Mr. Sellen, you are going first. Two minutes, unmute yourself, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Marlene. Thank you, Leek, and thank you, uh, Carrie, for uh, joining tonight. And Leek, thank you for making this happen. And I commend you for what you're doing for our democracy in this country and in, in Morris, Morris County. So my, as, as you mentioned, my name is Typhoon Selen. Typhoon is just like the hurricane. 
And I came to America in 1996. I didn't speak English. I started at a gas station in Madison, right here in Morris County. In, two, in 12 years, fast forward, I became the American citizen. That is one of the proudest moments of my life. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Fast forward another 12 years, I became the mayor of Chatham Township, one of the most beautiful towns in Morris County, if not in the country. So America gave me a lot. America gave me the opportunity. I worked hard and I, uh, I, I realized the opportunities in America. So what I would like to do is to give back to my country and my community by serving as your next freeholder. Please give me the opportunity. I'd like to earn your vote. I'd like to earn your support to serve and give my country and my county back. Thank you very much. Back to you, Margaret. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Amaro, unmute yourself, please. Hi, everyone. I want to take a moment to thank the League of Women Voters, the NAACP, and Typhoon Salim. Um, thank you for putting this um, nonpartisan forum together um, to um, give information to the public. I am honored to be here with all of you. This race is about putting people over politics. This pandemic has shown us the importance of community. As a single mom who has taken nothing for granted, I know what it's like to live in a state of uncertainty. We need leaders who will listen and act and use their knowledge to better the community um, for Morris County. For the past 14 years, I've guided organizations through tough situations as a controller. I know how important it is to see the entire picture to make sure every dollar counts. We need fiscally conservative budgets, along with ensuring that county services, which spans from planning and preservation, human services, higher education, law and public safety, um, are efficiently serving the community. All of, these, all of these work together for a sustainable future, and how we proceed with these is how we move the ball forward efficiently. I believe I can bring to the freeholder board the un, um, that understands the broad picture to contribute to sound decisions, leadership for the community, and um, ensuring that we don't forget anyone in our community. For those experiencing hardship and financial difficulties, I know where you're going through and we will work to make sure that we are protecting you. So thank you very much, Carrie. Thank you. Okay, we move on to the second portion of the program, which are um, which are questions that were generated by the public, and um, each of the candidates will be um, asked the same question. They will be given one minute to respond to that question. Uh, the first question, Mr. Sellen, you're going to go first. Um, asks the following: For our newly engaged citizenry. What exactly does the Morris County Freeholder do and how do they impact and participate in the local political structure? One minute. Unmute yourself, please. Hi, Marlene, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. For our newly engaged citizenry, what exactly does the Morris County Freeholder do and how do they impact and participate in the local political structure? Thank you very much, Marlene. And you know, my my uh, experience as as a mayor and, and a freeholder and, and a community member in Chatham Township, I had the opportunity to uh, realize and understand what those separate positions in the municipal level and the county level uh, would do. So what, my, uh, what I have been experiencing is that Morris County freeholder job is one of the most impactful jobs that could impact the, uh, the residents' lives. So Morris County Freeholder Board, Morris County Freeholder Board uh, manages and, and runs $315 million uh, county budget. So uh, Freeholder Board uh, runs several of uh, programs that would, that would uh, impact to human services. So we uh, fix the roads, we fix uh, the buildings, 
that buildings the homeless shelters and we help people in Morris County in all walks of lives. And thank you very much, Molly. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Amaro. Am I on mute? Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, great. I just wanna make sure I'm not on mute. The Freeholder Board um, is given a broad, the broad powers by the state legislature to regulate the county's property finances and affairs. Freeholders set the policy that oversees county operations such as public works, finance, human services, employee relations, public safety, IT. But it boils down to efficiently allocating funds for services and programs. And how we do this is so important. Did you know that before COVID, we had a 3% we had unemployment rate and now we're up to 8.8? That 24% of Morris County residents live living paycheck to paycheck? Collaboration is needed to help all with housing requirements, roadways, infrastructure, and fire, um, environment and economy. Proactive leadership is what I can offer the Freeholder Board. I have the ability to work with diverse minds and create improvements. In this time of COVID, I've been working with multiple municipalities, coordinating with the Table of Hope to service those who are in need. It's more than paving roadways. It's more than saying, let's pay the bills. It's securing that we as a community meet all and make sure that we are all taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Mar Marley, may I may I uh, yes. say something? Okay, so uh, 30, 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. Okay, uh, Kerry mentioned that the unemployment rate was three percent. Now it's eight percent, right? If I don't, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So as far as unemployment rate, yes, it was two point nine percent. It was the best, second best unemployment rate in the state among those twenty one counties, and it's still the lower than the uh, average state average. So Morris County has constantly and consistently is done better than any other counties. Yes, we are going through crisis and we are managing those crises better than any county in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Question number two. And Ms. Amaro, you're going first. And that question asks, if towns want to merge in order to cut costs and taxes, how can the county facilitate that action? I think that the county has the best effort to do that. Why? Because they are used to dealing with 29. They're used to dealing with um, the 39 municipalities. They're used to understanding how to mitigate costs. They're used to understanding how to communicate across the lines. So the biggest problem with towns merging is the fact that people that the community still wants to feel that they are still have ownership of the resources that are coming in and that they're coming in efficiently. So what the freeholders what the freeholders can do is ensure that effective resources and effective policies and transitions to the municipalities can be had so that in that way we can share services and reduce costs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sellen. Unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Same, is that the same question? Yes. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry to say this that my, my uh, opponent is uninformed. And this has already been happening. So shared services has already been happening. Towns didn't get merged, but the services got merged. So in 2020, $8 million shared services revenue is budgeted in the county budget. So it is already happening, whether it's, look what, what Sheriff's Office has been doing with the Sussex County inmates program. We're bringing $2 million into county. So this thing is happening. Look what's happening with the emergency, uh, you know, 911 uh, emergency center. So it's millions of dollars, two, two million dollars, another $2 million is bringing into the county because of these shared services. So that is already happening. So that is happening. Future is today. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Amaro, 30 seconds. Hi, um, in answering the question, I did not answer it incorrectly. There are additional services that we can share. We can share our vocational skills from that we learn with, with the vocational schools to the high to other schools throughout Morris County. We can share our fire safety. We can share our 
recycling. We can share a different additional services that we have throughout Morris County. And her question was essentially, how can we advocate and how can we be the people, the person or the group of leaders who can better serve the community in that process? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Okay. And Ms. Amaro, you get to go first. And the question asks, do you think we should transfer Morris County police funds to mental and social services to take the burden off the police? I would have to look further at the budget for that. Um, I would also have to really look at how that impacts um, law enforcement versus how that impacts um, the mental health sector. I would also have to look at if there's grant avail availability for that mental health sector before understanding why I would be taking those funds away. So they kind of, they do work together. I believe that law enforcement does need a mental health um, ability so that they understand what they're facing day to day and, and to, to understand and have the tools available to themselves on how to deal with all of the issues that they face. Um, so that would need additional um, research because I would not like to short any department. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sellen. You have to unmute yourself. As I said before, this is the phrase of 2020, unmute yourself, you know, so that's, that's what I'm doing. And so no, uh, what I would like to do is to increase the budget for uh, our public safety. And right now we have 20% uh, in our county budget for the public safety. And so I would like to advocate for increasing budget for the police and, and, and public safety. Plus, I would like to increase the budget for mental services. So how can we do it? We can share more services. We can innovate just like we've done. And you know, we manage better in a fiscally conservative way so we can find the funds to fund the police at the same time fund the mental health organizations, which we have been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Amaro. Hi, and I also think it would be good for us to one, take a look at streamlining costs streamlining costs, going back and weeding through things that maybe we have not spent properly on so that we can not necessarily increase the budgets, but look at innovative, efficient ways of spending money. Because one of the things that we need to do is be cognizant of the fact that we are going through a pandemic. Thank you. Okay, next question, Mr. Sellen, you go first. And the question asks, do you feel that the freeholders overinvest in certain departments at the detriment of others? Which ones? I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that uh, statement. And again, we have to innovate. We have to make sure we, we fund those uh, services that our uh, constituents, our residents need from us. Uh, you know, we, we have to do a good job, which we have been doing a good job. And that's why Morris County has been uh, one of the top counties in the state for every metric you can imagine and every metric you can imagine. So, you know, we have the best schools. We have the best park commission. We have the best parks. We have the uh, lowest crime rate. We have uh, the lowest unemployment rate. So this county has been the, one of the greatest counties to live, work, raise a family, even retire. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Amaro. So I think we have to take a step back. And this is, I think, why we need new leadership, all right, on the, on the board. We need to basically kind of, especially now, take a step back and look at what's being spent in what departments. Um, are, are those costs being, are those um, costs efficient? Are we doing things the right way? And what do we need currently? based on what we're going through right now and what we can forecast is going to happen in the next few years. So it could be that we are inefficiently spending money. And that is why, especially now, their leadership change is important so that we can have different a different mindset to say, let's take a step back and understand what are the issues facing our community and how we can possibly streamline and move things around. Thank you. Mr. Salen. Mar Marlene, Marlene, again, uh, same, uh, same thing. And 
you know, Morris County has the triple A rating, bond rating, uh, because of the, the good fiscal management. So what my opponent just described has already been happening, has already been happening. So we just, you know, we're going to have a meeting just uh, in two days, looking over all the capital budget investments for the next five years. We plan for the next five years. Those things are already happening. So, you, you know, she just needs to be informed and I'm happy to connect with her. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Go through next, point, next, no, the uh, rebuttal is just the next person. So uh, next question, Mr. Sellen, you go first. And the question asks, there's a lot of discussion occurring within the state legislature concerning the regionalization of our current 584 operating school districts. Some adherents would even narrow those districts down to the 21 New Jersey counties. The Mars County freeholders are heavily invested in the County Technical School and the County College. What relationship, if any, do you think the county freeholders should have with the traditional pre-K to 12 school located within our county? Yep. I mean, as, as you know, all those school, uh, schools are governed by their own body, their own elected uh, officials. So that's uh, by the state statute, they have their own uh, governance, uh, their elected officials. But I would like to say this, Morris County has uh, the greatest vocational schools uh, in the state. Morris County, uh, Voltec uh, plus County College of Morris, there are two uh, great schools that could and that are preparing our youth for the future. Traditional college is not for everyone. Traditional college is, uh, doesn't, pre uh, doesn't uh, offer you a, a great return on income, return on investment. So we are, if we are investing our future, we need to invest in our youth and their education and the Voltec and trade education and skill trades are exactly the way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Amaro. Um, so I think that we should basically, we can expand what we do in Voltec and I'm a true believer and I, I'm a true believer in expanding what we do in Voltec and all the schools coming together. And I think the freeholder board can work as um, a conduit of sort where all the, all the school districts all the boards of ed can come and talk together about how we can do this um, in a way that's beneficial for all of the schools, in a way that the schools don't feel like they're getting forgotten, in a way that the schools don't feel like they're gonna lose what they're trying to build with their students. So if we can build the ability that we can take what happens at Voltec, we can have do at CCM, and we can take the new skills and, in, and put that into what we do in our high schools, in our middle schools, in our elementary schools, and teach different different ways of learning, we can have, we can streamline costs and have a better educational system. But it's about making the municipalities and each respective board of ed feel comfortable with the decision. Thank you. Okay, next question. Ms. Amaro, you go first. And the question asks, everyone is concerned about the tax base across New Jersey. What actions would you take as a county freeholder to address the rising property taxes within Mars County? Okay. So here's what we have, this is what I would like to see um, done. We have to take and we have to look at basically what we are spending, what municipalities are spending. The freeholders should basically have a meeting with the municipalities and say, okay, let's figure out how much money is being spent in X services. How can we share those services? How can we streamline costs together? How can we make Morris County more affordable to live in, especially now, especially now. And that's what that's what I would do on the freeholder board is advocate for that open communication, for, for, for that streamlining of, of services, for that cutting through the weeds and figuring out how we can save taxes for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sellen. Yep, and that, okay, so that's another area that, you know, uh, our taxes are 76% uh, lower than neighboring counties because of the fiscally conservative governance 
of Morris County Freeholders Board. And, and freeholders can be conduit to start a conversation and, and actually come up with opportunities and innovative opportunities to share more services than with the towns. So we can help towns, towns can help each other. So it could be a, in a collaboration. So I'm totally open to it. That is also already happening. Can we improve it? Yes, we can. And yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Ms. Amaro, you're going to be going first on this one as well. And the question asks, many municipalities are having difficulties complying with the state's affordable housing mandates. What role, if any, should the county freeholders play in supporting the housing needs of our most vulnerable population, including our seniors, many who live on fixed incomes? Okay, can you repeat the question again? Sure. Mm -hmm. many, many municipalities are having difficulties complying with the state's affordable housing mandates. What role, if any, should the county freeholders play in supporting the housing needs of our most vulnerable populations, including our seniors, many of whom live on fixed incomes. Okay, so the freeholders should be playing an active role in the development of, um, of trying to help the municipalities and how to develop affordable housing. Because there's infrastructure, there's shared roadways, there's a lot of different aspects that cause this conflict between different municipalities. It's important that we share ideas as a community so that we can make sure that we don't forget our seniors, that we reduce taxes, that we streamline costs. Um, and that's the way that the freeholders can address that situation. They we, in, in the instance of anything uh, talking about large building capacities, the freeholders should be involved in the conversation because there are so many things that get impacted by um, building new, do new projects. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sellen. Sure. Uh, affordable housing issue is an issue that should have been resolved in Trenton a long time ago, and it hasn't been. So every small or large or mid-sized town have to deal with affordable housing uh, problem to solve it. So affordable housing issue is a real issue and it has to be solved. So that has to stay within the town level and county can, can support towns as needed. And it is shame on all of us that 9,000, not the 600 people in New Jersey are still homeless today. And it went up 9% from last year. But Morris County, uh, it actually went down in last one year. It's big, it, as of last year, 354 persons are homeless persons in Morris County. And my work is not gonna be done. Each and every person can have a roof on top of them so they can have a house to go in and just like us and to go in and sleep in a house. Miss Amara, 30 seconds. Okay, I think we need to step back, right? And we need to kind of really understand what we're seeing. We can't in one breath talk about Morris County being a great place to live and not understand that there are people like our elderly community that are gonna need affordable housing. We can't tell them once they get to a certain age or a certain income type, you gotta move. You know, like it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a nice thing to do. At the same time, we understand that municipalities need a place to go to where they can say, I'm stuck with this specific issue. Like if I put the, oh, like if I put this housing here, I'm gonna get more of a traffic jam. And that's where the county freeholders can at least work as a liaison for that. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, Mr. Sellen, you go first. The question asks, how could, we, how could we make Morris County more environmentally sustainable? What actions would you like to see the county government take to address the impact of climate change? Exactly, so that's, that's uh, again, climate change is real and we have to be conscious in the environment. And I am myself, I'm a lead AP, which means leadership and energy and environmental design. I'm certified a professional. 
and environment is important. So every contract that Morris County does to make sure the vendors provide the environmentally uh, sound solutions. If we're buying an HVAC equipment, we're make, we need to make sure we're saving on energy. If we're building a building, we need to make sure that building is environmentally friendly and compliance with the new uh, rules and regulations. So we have the best open space in the state. We have 2000 acre parks. So we have to uh, preserve uh, those parks and make sure that we help funding those open spaces and preserve those open spaces and parks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Amaro. Okay, so <laughs> with this question, um, basically, I think we need to start investing and talking to and sharing ideas with our municipalities regarding green infrastructure. As a county, yes, we need to basically make sure having mandated that any contract that we get into construction contract is taking into consideration every single aspect and become a leader in green innovative building. I also think that we need to kind of look and not be logging. I, I don't think we should be logging. I think we should be looking at what we use in our to maintain our lawns so that we don't have issues with our lakes. I believe that we can use Voltec and CCM to, um, to get into um, wind energy, teaching our children um, how to deal with wind energy, solar energy, environmentally friendly ways of dealing with the environment so that they can make a really genuine impact in Morris County and still reside here. Thank you. Mr. Sellen. Uh, Marlene, as a mayor in Chatham Township and I uh, supported our environmental commission wholeheartedly and we have uh, adopted a new uh, ordinance to allow using organic uh, treatment for all, all of our grasses, you know, public, uh, property uh, grass fields. And it was the right thing to do. And it was, it did cost a little, little more than regular treatment, but we have done it because it was the right thing to do. If there's an opportunity, the county level, I am willing to be able to do the right thing for the people of Morris County. Thank you. Now to continue with um, talking about sustainability, uh, Mr. Sellen. Would you encourage the county fleet of vehicles to transition to electric or hybrid vehicles? And would you support creating a recharging infrastructure within the county, especially at the county facilities like the library, the Votex school and the recycling depot? I would, and, but here's what I would do. I wouldn't buy new cars, new vehicles today. What I would do for future purchases, I would definitely look into uh, the, the comparison, return on investment. So what are we spending and what are we getting? So yeah, definitely for the future purchases, I am uh, you know, open to look into electric cars. And, but again, it's all about cost benefit. So we need to make sure our mandate, our mandate is the govern, govern the county and accountable for it, for the people of, of Morris County. We're not doing it, it's not our own money, it's the taxpayer's money. And we need to make sure we spend it uh, responsibly. So that's all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amaro. Okay, so I, I think that when vehicles are up to be repurchased, that they should, that we should invest in green vehicles. I do believe that we should invest in, in fact, um, putting in um, the, the, the charging stations. I believe that this not only will help us with our, our county vehicles, but if we put it in a way where it can be used by our constituents, it's a revenue sector, um, you know, for us if they wanna charge their car. Uh, I do believe that we have to see a bit in advance and understand that people move to Morris County for the beautiful greenery and the fact that we want, and we can't say that we want to be um, environmentally conservative and then not say that we want to change our vehicles when it's time for us to, in fact, change our vehicles. So that's how I feel about it. Okay, Mr. Sell. I just, I just want to understand, clarify, if you don't mind, uh, Ms. Amaro. 
And are you advocating to purchase new brand new cars for the entire fleet? No, I'm saying oh, okay. that when the cars are ready to be purchased, like when it becomes a part of the budget, like, oh, we're ready to purchase new cars now, we would decide on purchasing green. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question. Ms. Amara, you go first. And the question talks about traffic congestion. <coughs> traffic congestion has been a major concern within many parts of Morris County. Would you support more effective public transportation options within the county? If yes, what would you do to ease our traffic congestion problems? Okay, so step one. I would, um, in fact, support that. Um, but at the same time, I would like to take a minute and kind of talk to, um, I would try to want to understand if there is a way that we can um, um, invest in possibly different ways of the flow of traffic um, so that we can also, in addition to using public transportation, find ways to um, relieve the stress of traffic throughout our, throughout our towns. Um, one of the things that I we do have to be cognizant of is the fact that there are places that um, that that are so far away that they may not have the ability for public transportation, and we would also need to see the cost benefit of what that would be to get public transportation there versus creating more efficient um, flows of traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sellen. Sure, uh, I will definitely support public transportation opportunities where possible. And I will definitely pull into state uh, government, the Department of Transportation, uh, where we can make changes in our uh, exits and entrances to the park, uh, parkways and our interstate ways and in our, in our county. And we are at the center of New Jersey. We are a center for businesses. And so we need to have a better traffic flow that would support the business growth. And yes, uh, I would support uh, public transportation where possible. And as part of my background as, as leader in energy and environmental design, and one of the criteria is actually the picking building locations and closer to public uh, transportation and reduce the carbon emissions by using less cars. And so that's, uh, that's uh, part of my special. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question, Mr. Sellen, you get to go first. Um, the question asks, do you think that we are currently making the best use of our County Tourism Bureau to bring new businesses and increase tax rateables within the county? What changes would you support? And I don't know the answer, and, uh, but I would definitely look into it. And we need to have a strong tourism bureau because we have uh, the very strong historical values and, and uh, places in our county and we could definitely take advantage of. I know the Tourism Bureau is uh, you know, not staffed uh, well and uh, maybe there's an opportunity there to uh, look into and have uh, you know, a stronger uh, department. Uh, but again, I, I don't know the answer. Ms. Amaro. Carrie. Um, okay, what I would do is I would take and I would ask the tourism, I would ask someone in the tourism bureau if possible um, to basically, it could be one person, to basically communicate with um, the different municipalities, get an understanding of what we can use um, to better advertise our public space, our county parks, and I would look at what businesses we have there and I would work with the municipalities to market the wonders of said town. And then I would take, and then we, we could take and advertise together the beauty of Morris County and the wonderful trails we have and the wonderful, the wonderful little towns we have in stores and communities, and parks and restaurants. And that, and then that I would take that and we can do festivals and we can celebrate our history of, of our municipalities. So that's what I would do with the Tourism Bureau. I do think there's much more that we, that we can do. Um, and it just takes, it doesn't take a lot. You know, it just takes a little bit of innovative thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question, Ms. Amaro, you go first. 
And the question asks, earlier freehold, freeholder boards authorized the privatization of Morris Ner View Nursing Home. How well do you think this privatization has served our elderly residents? Would you renew the contracts as they become due? Okay. So I've spoken to a few individuals and I would say that if I have the ability to think uh, to change, if it would stay the way it is now, I would definitely seriously just understand what are what's going wrong and what's going what's happening right. I've, I've heard that the treatment of the patient, um, the children, the treatment of the residents is not the way that it used to be when it was run by the county. Um, but I would have to observe that uh, by myself and understand what is the benefit of having it privatized versus us taking it over. What what are the cost benefits of taking retaking it over? How can we possibly reinvest in it? Um, how can we possibly make it better without reinvesting? I mean, I would really have to take an understanding, understand it because there is a concern there that quality of care has in fact gone down and that should be addressed. Thank you. Mr. Sellen. Yes, okay. Uh, my understanding is that that facility Morris View was, was losing 500 plus thousand dollars per year. As of today, and we were running the facility, right? We operationally, we were responsible. As of today, we are not responsible for the operations. We gave it to the professionals, just like, you know, who's, uh, who can do the best job? Professionals, right? So today we get $2.8 million and from that facility. That means over $3 million of, 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 a, of a swing, which means we can invest money for the hope one, we can invest money for the food pantries, we can invest money for environmental sound solutions, we can invest money for our elderly. So we have the money because we were innovative. That's what innovation is all about. That's what the innovation is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amaro. Um, I don't think that the mistreatment of our elderly should be um, put a price put on it. And I would, because I have heard some issues, I would just out of curiosity, just see what's happening, just see what the numbers are, see what the statistics are. And um, maybe innovation means getting proper management in those facilities. Maybe innovation means finding ways to make it a profit sector instead of losing money. So I would look at that before I would make a decision. Thank you. Thank you. And just want to clarify, Marlene, something. We're not putting a price on our elderly. That's totally the opposite. We're innovating, making a losing losing business, money-making business, and get that money and invest in our elderly. Invest in Hope One. Invest in our solutions for environment. So that is exactly the right way of leading through a pandemic. That's why we were able to spend $3.8 million without getting CARES Act money and we spent that money, we took the risk, not knowing if we, whether we were able to get it from the government or not. Thank but you. that thank was you. the worth. Thank you. Mr. Worth thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mr. Sellen, you get to answer the next question first. And the next question deals with, how would you address the systemic problems that have occurred at Greystone Psychiatric Facility since it has been under county oversight? I don't know the details, Marlene, and I will research and get back to you. Ms. Amaro? Um, I, I also don't know um, the concerns there, but again, it would take getting some actual factual data and assessing when the trend has shifted to seeing concerns. And if that has to do with possibly a reduction in our staff, if it has to do with the quality of um, caregivers that we have and doctors, and um, or is it simply that it's just mismanaged and we just need to get 
correct management in the facility. Um, so I would definitely have to look at the factual data. I would definitely have to look at management structure. I would definitely have to look at our care. I would definitely have to look at the salaries. I would definitely have to look at all of the operational issues that are possibly causing um, the mistreatment of any resident there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And our last qu question for this evening, uh, is as follows, and Ms. Amaro, you're going first. The question states, part of the role of a local official is to serve as the eyes and ears on the ground for our congressional representatives and senators. So many people in our community are suffering from economic hardships due to the current pandemic. Many jobs are not coming back. Their food lines and rents and mortgages have not been paid throughout Morris County. What could you do as a freeholder to be an advocate for Morris County during this COVID crisis? So this pandemic has been um, very difficult for many. And I um, have taken part in um, Table of Hope in Feeding Our Hungry. I've stepped, I've taken part in doing, even though I don't like the internet or making videos, I make videos talking to businesses about what they can do to kind of get through this pandemic. Um, I've talked, I've talked, I've done videos to um, address this with our individuals with mental health. Um, I have also I also feel that we have a voice with our congressional leaders to say, this is what we need, this is what we're facing, and this is what we have to get done for our community. And that's at our congressional level, at our federal level, that is at our state level, that is with our governor. We have a voice. We have a voice. As people, as leaders, we have a voice. And that's what I would use my voice for, is to answer for all of those people who don't have a job and who are hungry. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Sellen. Can you repeat the question, Marlene? Sure. I just want to uh, clarify because the, the answer, I just okay. want to make sure. I'm okay, here's the question again. Part of the role of a local official is to serve as the eyes and ears on the ground for our congressional representatives and senators. So many people in our community are suffering from economic hardship due to the current pandemic. Many jobs are not coming back. There are food lines. Rents and mortgages are not being paid throughout Morris County. What would you do as a freeholder to act as an advocate for these people during the COVID crisis? Sure. And one, I'll give you an example. I'm uh, the member of the Complete Count Committee, which, uh, which has to do with the, the census. And because of our population, we, uh, our population is 491,000 uh, versus $500,000. If we were above 500,000, we would get uh, millions and millions of dollars. Passaic County received $87 million CARES Act money from the federal government. So what we have to do, number one, make sure we get counted. So, you know, we get our fair share from the federal government if there's, an, uh, if there's a crisis happen. And congressional uh, representatives, we have to build a good relationship with them. So we have a great relationship with our existing congressional uh, representative, uh, Mike Michelle. She's not from my party, but, you know, I respect her a lot. So, you know, we, we, we work together. Uh, she worked with the county administration to pull the money. And now governor uh, actually sat on the money for a long time that we were able to get the money only three weeks ago. Uh, we got the first money uh, about a month ago. Uh, and now the second round, we just got it a couple of uh, weeks ago. So, you know, the governor's office, the congressional uh, delegate from New Jersey, we have to build good relationships, work with them as a partner, not a bipartisan mm -hmm. way. And I am a bipartisan. I worked as a mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Amaro. Okay. Um, can you repeat the question, please? Wait. No. It's a new question. No, no new question. I'm sorry. It was my oh. fault. Oh. That, okay. Um, can okay. I? Can you, I? Okay. You wish to rebut? Thirty seconds. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, we do have, I believe that leadership should not look for um, 
or wait for things to happen, but make them happen. And that is why um, I've been basically screaming as loud as I can to say that everyone needs to fill out their census and explain to everyone as I can why they need to fill out their census and why it is important for proper representation in government, for proper representation in your state and for getting services in our county. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now, and we Marnie, talk, no, Marnie. no, 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 excuse me. No, we're up to the closing. You can say whatever you need to say in your closing statements. Okay. We're now up to that section. Uh, you get two minutes for closing statements. And Ms. Amaro, you're going to go first for the closing. Two minutes. Okay. First, I'd like to thank everyone for having me um, speak here today and to bring this information out to the public. This year, leadership is at center stage. How we govern is at the utmost importance and how we listen to our residents and understand the big picture moving forward is integral to the correction of this fallout of the pandemic. We need fiscally conservative budgets while ensuring efficient county services. We need leaders who understand that securing a triple A bond rating and securing our taxes don't go up means that we need to understand and reach out to support our businesses, to give educational ability to, to educate people who are unemployed if necessary, to, to assist in getting thinking outside to get economic relief, ensuring we have secondary and tertiary resources by not complaining that we didn't get money due, due to not filling out the census, but saying, oh, we didn't get money for filling out the census and we're in a census year. I am gonna make sure I reach out to everyone and make sure they are filling out their census. Me as an individual leader on that freeholder board because one person can make a difference. All of these, in, these issues are mental health, the treatment of our children. All of these issues impact our investment in our properties, in our businesses. Why? Because it all goes together. Property values, business values, economic stability of Morris County, it all goes together. I have my master's degree in accounting and over 14 years of experience working with diverse minds and understand from firsthand experience how it, what it takes to work with different voices in a room and how to make innovation occur. We, we, what we do need is to secure, to secure an innovative, different way of thinking on the freeholder board to work together and that's who I am to, um, to bring into the freeholder board. We need leadership who understands the entire picture of securing our investment in Morris County and caring for our residents who are able to say out that person like me who's able to say out loud that I know what you're going through and I'm here for you and I'm honored to be running to represent you. So thank you very much. And if you need any additional information, please um, follow me at Carrie Amaro for freeholder.com. And don't forget to vote and you can register to vote by tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sellen. Two yeah, minutes. First, as, uh, thank you very much again, the league and, and Carrie for, for joining and, and make, uh, for league making this happen tonight. It's important what you do for our democracy. And for the census, based on the recent research and its effect, uh, including regional data with uh, seven states, Morris County is the best uh, self-reported uh, state, uh, the, the county in the entire uh, state. 77.6% 70 uh, rate self-reported uh, for the census. So we are the best. This metric as well, we are the best in, uh, in, the, in the state. So the, these are times with the lifetime challenges. It requires leadership, leaders with perseverance and expertise. My perseverance as a coming here to America as a 26 years old man, not speaking English, starting at a gas station, that is perseverance my experience as a mayor and, and heading on to the challenges and solving them one by one, it's an experience. My experience as a freeholder just in the last 10 months or so and heading on this pandemic and responding to this pandemic and, and one of the best responses and much, much, much better than many other counties and we, is, you know, started stocking uh, stuff month and a half before the first case happened in, in, in Morris County. 
first case happened in March and we started in January to stock uh, PPEs. And we put together a testing site by the CCM immediately. So we uh, put together a task force with different panels. I chaired the communities panel and provided thermometers to all these community organizations. That is the kind of leadership Morris County deserves. And thank I'm you. Thank you very much. Thank leadership. you. And I would like to thank the candidates thank for you. appearing uh, before thank you this you. evening. Thank and you, Mr. Reader. I also would like to remind you to go to vote411.org and find out more about the candidates as well as the three state ballot questions, one dealing with legalizing marijuana, the uh, second one dealing with the $250 property tax deduction for veterans who did not see combat, and three uh, fair districts in terms of uh, representation. Information about whether to vote yes or no on any of these issues is available at lwvnj.org. The state league uh, says reasons to vote yes and reasons to vote no. Although the state league does ask people to vote no on the fair districts, it asks for a permanent, situ a permanent solution to a temporary situation. Also a uh, reminder, Everybody's received their ballots. Registration ends tomorrow. You can mail in your ballot at the post office, at a secure box throughout the county, or give it to a poll worker on election day. And do not forget that on Thursday, October 15th, we will be having a forum for Chatham Township. And on Friday, October 23rd, there will be a forum for the 25th State Legislative District the Senate candidates, as well as the assembly candidates. And all of these forums are available to you. They've been recorded on the Morris, uh, Morris Town Area YouTube channel. So good evening and don't forget to vote.